and over to Chris Loder again. This is going to be uh, specific to Highways England, so bear with us, Mr Smallwood and Mr Loveday. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, Elliot. Elliot, it's nice to see you uh, today. Um, so, first of all, um, now I'm not a mathematician, but from my calculations, you've had roughly an 80% increase in, uh, in public money for RIS2 than you did on RIS1. So I work out that you've got 27.4 billion billion in RIS2 compared to 15.2 billion in RIS1. I don't know if those numbers are absolutely correct, but I, I hope they are. Um, have you got enough money? Is the first question for RIS2. Um, have we got enough money? Uh, I, I think the money that we have been allocated reflects our expectation of what the projects will cost. Um, and sorry, I, I should also say it's not just our project. So what, what's very important is people often say 27.4 billion of, of you know being spent on road building. Actually, uh, approximately half of that money is not being spent on on road enhancements. Uh, approximately half of it is on operating, maintaining and renewing the network, so making sure it's safe uh, and continues to flow. There's also uh, almost a billion pounds on designated funds, uh, which enable us to do, I think, you know, environmental projects, projects with the community. I, I'm, I'm sorry, thank you for your long answer, but I'm just asking, have you got the money to do what you need to do? It's the first question. We, we think the budgets match the scope of what's in there. Um, okay. and, it's challenging, and, but yes. And, and therefore, did the government fund all of the schemes that you put forward in RIS2? So, so the government have funded all of the schemes that are in RIS2. So every yeah. single every single project you wanted to uh, happen in RIS2, you funded, uh, the government has funded, is that right? Well, so the, the way the process works is we we undertake our route strategies and that produces yeah. a, a long list I, of I, options. I'm, 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 well aware, I'm well aware of that process. I'm just asking to confirm, for you to confirm, the government has funded every single project that you've asked for the government to fund? Yes. Right. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, therefore, I suppose, when I say, have you got enough money, um, for example, other roads that some of us feel quite strongly about with the A303, I know we get, I think we've got some of that, haven't we, for the, for the tunnel, but um, some of the other roads, um, I'm just wondering uh, if you've got everything that you've asked for, how come we haven't got things like for some of the roads. I mean, I'm not going to go round the table with all the roads that we all want to get sorted out, but I'm just wondering, are you being ambitious enough if you're getting all the money that uh, that you asked for? You're very fortunate. I, I could never get that with the railways when I worked for them. But uh, uh, You must have so, the gift to the gaff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I would reflect that I think, uh, as you say, actually, there is a, you know, there was an increase in RIS 1 compared to pre-RIS, and there's an increase in RIS 2. I, I would reflect, I think, that, you know, that there's arguably been historic underinvestment in the road network, and I think that the original RIS set out to try and address that. We know it's going to take a longer time to upgrade the entire road network to the level that we would ideally like it to be. Do you, but, think, do you think Highways England is an organisation that is littered with bureaucracy, which is costing the taxpayer an enormous amount of money? Uh, so I do not think that. I mean, I think uh, I think that Highways England um, is, uh, you know, as ever, an organisation that is, um, you know, developing and improving. But I would reflect that we've brought in a huge amount of actually external capability and have gone come through a huge amount of change actually over the past sort of four or five years. And part of that is really to try and make sure that we're the most effective infrastructure operator we can be. So. I'm delighted to hear that, but I just want to share, you a little, share with you a brief insight, if I may. Now, you may know that the A35 is very close to my heart in West Dorset. Um, five years ago, Highways England had an external consultant tell Highways England that safety was a considerable issue. A letter I've got from your regional director that arrived yesterday tells me the timeline of addressing safety studies with a view, bear in mind it was five years ago you were told this, tells me that final construction for some safety initiatives are going to be completed in four years' time. I don't know how many people have got to die on that road for you guys to sort yourself out. So from my perspective, um, I would just like to understand, you've got £27.4 billion pounds in RIS2, it appears very much to me that safety is not your number one priority.
party because I think it's fair to say dozens of people will die on the A35. Now, when I worked for Network Rail, if that happened to me, I would have been sacked. And I'm just under, not quite understanding why we are accepting or why you and your colleagues at the senior executive level of Highways England are accepting such levels of bureaucracy that are ultimately costing mm. the taxpayer billions of pounds. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, I'd be very happy to uh, take a look at it. I don't know the specific case. I mean, the, the, what I would say is obviously there is a safety improvements uh, that we look to do across the entire network. So we have 4,300 miles of road, uh, and obviously inherently there are risks on traveling on our roads. Um, you know, on any roads, we, they are the safest roads in the country, and we try and minimise those risks. So I, I'd be surprised if dozen, dozens of people will die uh, on the road. I mean, well, I'd, I'd like to look at the well, statistics. Well, I'm very, I'm very sorry to have to, to tell you. I mean, have a look at the stats. I mean, it, it's, mm. it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. And I'm just going to say, um, this letter from your Southwest Regional Director that I had arrived yesterday here, um, he's either lying or he's incompetent. Because what I have in front of me here, and I've driven the A35 the other day, um, the, the cat size, the white lines are not maintained properly. And in this letter, which he says to me, after a very unfortunate collision the other day, is utter nonsense. The A35, I quote, the A35 is one of our highest priority routes in the southwest, requiring safety improvements. And he goes on to say that we carry out weekly safety inspections of our trunk roads. Um, that does not happen, or there's a huge level of incompetence uh, within your organisation, which is ultimately costing lives and costing the taxpayer money. Can you commit? Can you commit to having a thorough overhaul to the efficiency of Highways England in terms of its delivery to achieve what I understand to be your priorities in RIS2, of which one of them is safety, and I think the other is efficiency. So, so I, uh, I would reflect uh, that absolutely safety is, uh, you know, our top priority. Efficiency and productivity are top priorities. Would you, would you oh, agree, well, Elliot? I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elliot, but would you agree that actions speak louder than words in these sorts of areas? So, so I would, and I, the thing I, I suppose I'm conscious is I do not know this specific case, and I'm really happy to look into it. I, so I'd also I'd... reflect that ORR who look across the patch about our, you know, approach to safety, uh, approach to efficiency. I, I mean, again, you know, please do ask them. Please, please, please don't worry, I'm going to ask them that in a minute. So, yeah, uh, so, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I, I would reflect that, you know, they have recognised and, you know, my view would be that is we have made significant progress over the past five years. I, I, as I say, I do not know this specific do you think case, it, but do I'd you be think it's acceptable? Do you, do you think it's acceptable for a safety initiative that's probably costing millions of pounds, tens of millions of pounds, to take 10 years from conception to final delivery. This is a safety initiative. This isn't major road building. This is basically some safety initiatives to stop people dying. Is that acceptable for you, to, for that to take 10 years to do that? So, 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 I mean, I can say that we do take safety very, very seriously. I, I'm really happy to look into this issue and kind of come back to you. If, if I'm, as you I'm, say, I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon for interrupting again, but I, I, this is more of a strategic point. You know, you know, ten years for that sort of initiative. You know, are we? Is that is that is that an, a, a good example of what happens across your projects? So I don't think it is. So if you look at uh, our safety uh, performance overall, we're on track to meet our safety target, which is sort of 40% fewer people dying on our network. Within how long? Within, within how long? So that was over the RIS-1 target. We've got a challenge of, of making that 50% less over the last five years. So I think why we is your, why, is this your t why is your target not zero people dying on so, so our long-term target is zero people dying on all our roads, absolutely. But we, we know we cannot get there overnight. And at the moment, unfortunately, you know, the, the reality is there is a mix of factors that drive why people die on the roads. You know, sometimes it is the vehicle, sometimes it is the person, and sometimes the infrastructure as well. And we need to get those pieces sort of playing together. We absolutely do have a vision and ambition and a passion, I would say, to get to zero people 
uh, both killed and seriously injured uh, on our network. We think we've set a really stretching target, um, you know, well, have had a stretching target over the last five years uh, to reduce, uh, you know, deaths and serious injuries on our network and on Tractor, meet that, and similarly have played that forward and are making it even more stretching over the next five years. So, uh, again, I think at a system-wide level, absolutely, I would say safety is our top priority, and I think um, well, it's I've our remained... first API. I really would be delighted to look into well, this specific one because I mean, it is that, that's, say, that's kind of you, Elliot, but I just say from the evidence I have in front of me, that is not the case. I am not of the view that Highways England has safety as its top priority. I think it continues it continues to escalate my concern my personal concerns about the situation with smart motorways and how uh, how important Highways England has actually considered safety in that uh, uh, in that program, um, and I'm afraid. Whilst I appreciate what you're saying, I'm afraid everything that we see, or certainly everything that I see, I'm afraid does not back that up, and that is of a great cause of concern for me. But I, I would like to, if I may, just briefly uh, return to the whole point of the extra money that you have. So 27.4 billion in in RIS two. You've got all the money that you asked for, or, or all the projects which you asked to be funded. Um, can you tell us um, uh, the longest period of time that we expect to see all of those projects delivered in? So at what date are we going to see all of the RIS2 projects delivered by? Uh, so it will stretch into the um, mid to late 2020s, I, I think. So if you look at some of the bigger projects that are in there, um, so particularly things like Lower Thames Crossing or the uh, A303 Stone Edge Tunnel, um, you know, they're open for traffic dates, um, are, are sort of in the latter half of the so, decade. So, so um, my colleague Simon Jupp um, just now uh, spoke, he and I have mutual interest in the A303. Um, when, when can we see, because this has been going on for years in itself, I remember in the 2015 election, there was a commitment made about the A303 and the Highways England back that up, or the Highways Agency as was. Um, when is that tunnel going to be open for traffic, do you expect mm. at the moment? Uh, so um, we were very pleased to get the DCO approval uh, recently, so a few months ago. Um, I think we're currently, um, I, I would need to check, I think we're currently just reviewing what the open for traffic date can be. We're, we're obviously pushing for it to be as quickly as it can be. So do you mean, do you um, mean to tell me you've, you've got you've got billions of pounds of taxpayers' money for this project with no committed date. Is that, is that, is that what we're saying? There, there is a committed date. I'm sorry, I don't have the okay. open for traffic date. Well, would, you, would, you be, would you be so kind as to share that? that? Yeah, because uh, I think that's, um, that would be important for us, and I think we very much appreciate that. No, I was going to say, we're about to reconfirm it, so we're, we're going to um, uh, publish our annual delivery plan update, I think, in the next couple of months, and that will reconfirm that date. I'm sorry, I just don't have that. That's, that's okay. No, th thank you.